Hi everyone, my name is Sydney Brown, financial coach and budgeting expert known for helping single black women just like you spend money with confidence. This channel is for single black women who feel overwhelmed when they think about their financial future, confused when they think about managing their money, and shame when they think about their financial situation. I'm here to help you create and stick to a budget so that you can stop living paycheck to paycheck and start spending money with confidence. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss another video. So today I wanted to talk about banking fees to avoid when choosing a bank. If you've thought about opening a bank account, then this video is for you. All right, before we dive into this video, make sure that you grab the 52 actionable challenges. These challenges are designed to help you earn more money, save more money, and spend money on things you actually care about. And with that, let's dive into today's video. Okay, so I'm gonna start each fee with a, what is it? And then I'm gonna talk about how to avoid it. So the first fee is gonna be monthly maintenance fees. So what is it? What is a monthly maintenance fee? A monthly maintenance fee is a fee that the bank charges you just to hold your money. Okay. Generally, you can avoid these fees by signing up for both a checking and a savings account with the same bank or um, maintaining, a minimum ba maintaining a minimum balance in your bank account or signing up for direct deposit. So if any of those three options is easy for you with the purpose of this bank account, I would do that to avoid that monthly maintenance fee. Number two, out of network ATM fees. So what is it? Um, an out-of-network ATM fee is a fee that the bank charges you for using an ATM that is not um, with their bank. So if you have a Chase Bank and you use a Capital One ATM, you might get an out-of-network ATM fee. So how do you avoid this fee? Well, first thing you can do is start by just choosing an ATM that's in the network of your bank. Um, so if you're somebody that likes to use ATMs a lot, then choose a bank that has a lot of ATMs all over the place. Um, if you're somebody that's not doesn't really care about ATMs, um, maybe this isn't a fee that really matters for you. Also, if you're looking to avoid this fee, you could just uh, try to find somewhere that would allow you to get cash back. So if you go to like a grocery store and you buy like some M&Ms um, and you can get uh, cash back from your debit card most of the time you can do that for free and you wouldn't have to be charged an out-of-network ATM fee if you do have to use an ATM um, for whatever reason um, and you do anticipate needing cash for a lot of things um, I would just go ahead and choose a larger amount so that you don't have to pay multiple fees for um, you know multiple transactions that are out of network so you can avoid a large amount of fees are being charged a lot of fees by just uh, withdrawing a large um, amount from the from the beginning. Some banks do offer a refund up to a certain dollar amount on different um, ATM, like out of network ATMs. Um, so for example, if your bank charges or refunds you up to $20 back um, a month um, in out of network ATM fees, um look at the amount that the fee is going to be and see if you can stay within that amount so for example if, you, if they get you twenty dollars they refund you twenty dollars back um but each transaction is five dollars so five ten fifteen twenty so if you need to use the out of network more than five times i would try to keep it within that four times to avoid having to pay fees out of your own pocket okay, number three excessive transaction fees Okay, so what is it? So, this is a fee that is charged to savings account holders that exceed the federal limit um, for transactions. So with the savings account, you get six free um, withdrawals and transactions. So how do you avoid this fee? To avoid this fee, you would just, um, if you need a savings account and you don't plan to make that many transfer transfers or transactions, get a savings account, but if you anticipate making a lot of transactions, uh, transfers, withdrawals, things like that out of this account, then I would consider getting a checking account instead. Okay, number four, overdraft fees. What is an overdraft fee? 
An overdraft fee is a fee that the bank charges you to temporarily cover um, transactions that exceed your bank balance. So how do you avoid it? One way you can avoid this uh, fee is to add a buffer spending amount to um, your, you know, your bank account so that even if you do exceed a certain amount over your bank account balance, you would only cut into your buffer. So let's say, for example, you maintain a thousand dollar balance in your bank account. Um, if you, you know, anything above a thousand dollars is money available for spending, but let's say that you exceed this, the amount that you have in your account, it would only cut into that one thousand dollar buffer. Um, so you'd basically be covering yourself in case anything were to go wrong. Another way you can avoid these fees is monitoring your bank account balance and transferring money into the account before you need to spend money out of the account. You can also sign up for low balance notifications from your bank. So anytime your bank account balance is below a certain amount, they will notify you and you can try to either increase the amount of money that's in the account or not make the purchase. You can also sign up for overdraft protection. This is another way that the bank can try to help you um, avoid some of those fees. You can link another bank account to your um, bank so that in the event that you do overdraw your account, instead of the bank covering it using that fee and charging a fee, they will instead cover that amount with the attached, um, the linked uh, account. Not to, be control not to be confused with an insufficient funds fee, that's number five. So an insufficient fund fee is a fee that the bank charges you when they decline a purchase because um, it would put you in a negative balance. Okay, similar to the last fee, these fees can be avoided by maintaining a watchful eye over your bank account and also transferring money into the account in advance before making a purchase. Similarly, you can be notified when you have a low balance um, to avoid these types of fees. In an effort to keep the video short, I'm going to send three additional fees to avoid when choosing a bank and also some different bonus tips that I have for choosing a bank um, to my email subscribers. So if you're not signed up for the 52 challenges, make sure you sign up for that. It is totally free and you get a lot of bonuses just like that. Um, so in an effort to keep the video short, I'm gonna move on. So there you have it. That is my method for choosing a bank account. Those are some fees that I would try to avoid when I am choosing a bank. Overall, ultimately, choosing a bank is uh, your decision. Um, try to make a decision that fits within your lifestyle because the bank fees shouldn't, you know, run your life. You should be choosing the bank fees that are most avoidable for you. So let me know in the comments, what is your chosen bank? If you love your bank, let me know. If you hate your bank, let me know. Um, I wanna know which banks you guys are actually banking with um, and some of the benefits, if you love them, if you hate them, if they give you your money fast, if they wait to the very last minute to give you your bank, give you your money, let me know, I wanna know. Also like this video to let me know that you enjoyed it. That is how I decide which videos I keep making and which videos I choose to move in a different direction on. So if you like this video, you felt like it was helpful, uh, like the video just to let me know. Also make sure you subscribe so you never miss another video. Finally, don't forget to sign up for those 52 challenges. The link is in the description. That's all for today, bye. Thank you.